I, I love what Mr. Speakman has done with 5.0. I did train in 5.0. My instructor became a, a just speaking school for a few years. So we had a, um, I got to run through the, his original curriculum about once, like all the way through once. Um, he changes a lot. He adds a lot of ground stuff in there, a lot of ground techniques, and he's changed a lot of the technique sequences up. But even though the sequences might be um, considerably different, the principles are still there. It's still Kempo because it's still following the same grammar. Different words, or no, same words, same grammar. You're just using different sentences. So it's a different approach, and it's very um, competition and fight heavy, which I like a lot too because it's a little bit more pressure tested than your typical school. 5.0 is interesting because I like it a lot because what Jess Peekman did was, and I do believe, and there's going to be mixed opinion, I believe where 5.0 went is where ed parker would have taken it ed parker was always changing his system there's always additions always rearranging always adapting and i do believe 5.0 is ultimately if he was still around today where he would have wanted it to go because it, it updates it you know it updates a lot of the ideas uh, a lot of the original Kempo techniques excuse me were based off a of step through punch you don't see that that much these days it might have been more common, you know, back in the 50s, but, you know, jab crosses are a lot more common in a real fight. So Jeff Speakman altered a lot of techniques to be based off jab crosses. But what changes about that? Well, now, if you do a technique, an Ed Parker technique that started off, okay, guy's doing a step through with a right punch. Okay, well, that means his right leg is going to be forward. Well, if you're doing a technique now, that same technique based off a jab cross, well, they're not stepping forward anymore. You're in a completely different position. So what he did was he altered the technique to modify that sometimes it still worked sometimes you had to change it we have one technique shield and mace you know at park you know you slip the punch you do an outward block you strike the kidney and there's a whole sequence you do on the outside of the body well in the kempo 5 version you're on the inside you're still it was in the center line so it's the same technique but now it's modified to work on the inside of the body which i think is amazing because now it's like okay that just opened my mind is it's the same thing same ideas but you can apply it to different situations hot or cold side of their body and he did a lot of adaptions like that. He grouped things together because with Kempo, um, you have what's called the family-related techniques. You know, there are certain techniques where they, they are all built off the same concept. Sleeper, Thundering Hammers, and uh, Dance of Death are kind of they're related in one fa faction is that both all three techniques start as you're doing a block, but your rear hand is down low. Okay, well, one technique shoots a ridge hand to the groin. Next technique shoots a forearm to the body. Next technique does that brachial stun. Well, guess what? It's the same technique, but it's done low, middle, high zones. So that's that's a family grouping. And a lot of techniques are family grouped like that. With Jeff Speakman, he did that. And he, he what he did is he taught a lot of them together. Because in a lot of the Parker curriculums are spread apart. You'll learn one in this belt level, then you'll learn one in this belt level later, and then you have to go back, oh, this is just like this technique. A lot of Speakman uh, curriculum, at least when I went through it, he grouped them together. So you would learn them in sequential order. And he has uh, one sequence where they come in for a tackle. Okay, well, you're able to catch them before they get their arms around you. Well, then the next technique is, well, what do they get a little bit closer? They get a partial grip. The next technique is, well, what do they actually get you into the clinch? The next technique is, okay, now they've gotten you to the ground, and you're going to do this one sweep, and now they've gotten you to the ground, you're going to do another sweep. So he kept building on that. So I liked that a lot. I thought that was a very logical evolution for the art. All the same principles. It's still Kempo, but it's now applied in different sequences, modified for more modern fighting and there's a heavy emphasis on the ground fighting so when you do a kempo 50 fighting it's not usually point it is continuous fairly hard contact sometimes it's hard full contact sparring and it goes to the ground like the fighters stop until when one submits and there are tournaments that will be point based but the points basically are just they're tallied up as you go along so it won't be like point stop it'll be okay well this person scored 40 points this person scored 30 points however that works um but no i think I think Kempo 5.0 is a, is a wonderful system, and it's funny because I've got a really good friend. He's one of our viewers, too. He is training in California right now at a 5.0 school. I trained in 5.0 13 years ago, 14 years ago, and it's so different now. Like We will talk about techniques, and what he's learning now is completely different from what I learned. And it's, He jokes. It's, it's, sometimes they call it 5.1. But Jeff Speakman's doing the same thing. He's always adapting. He's always updating it. And I think that is the nat the natural path of Kempo. Kempo should not be static. A lot of art shouldn't be static. And Ed Parker even said to his son one day, he goes, if 10 years from now people are, are training Kempo the same way, they've not done my art justice. It's always about growth and adaptation.